Welcome back, everyone. This is uh, episode 16. And uh, we just want to open up in prayer. We kind of forgot the last episode, so uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, just thank you for this time that we can come as men and just get into your word, Lord. Because your word is enough. It is sufficient. So I just ask that um, the words that we speak are your words and not our own. And that the the listeners will be able to just understand it and, and to apply it to their life. I ask, Father God, that you would give them more strength and more wisdom from your word. And I ask that uh, you get the glory out of this. This is not for us, but for you. You must increase and we must decrease, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 All right. Amen. What uh, what verse do we leave off on? So we're going to be on 25. verse 25. And we'll just jump right into it. You want to pick it up? Sure. <clears throat> verse 25. Now some of them from Jerusalem said, Is this not he whom they seek to kill? But look, he speaks boldly, and they say nothing to him. Do, do the rulers know indeed that this is truly the Christ? However, we know where this man is from, but when the Christ comes, no one knows where he is from. Okay, we can stop there real quick. Okay. Um, so he's saying, it, well, you can see here, those from Jerusalem, right? They knew that the Pharisees, those in charge, wanted to kill him. Yeah. So the word was already getting out. Okay. But he, they're saying, but he speaks boldly. Why are they not, you know, coming to take him? Right? Do they, do they really know he's the Christ? So, you number one, that shows that they were expecting the Christ. You know, they knew who he was. They must have skipped the whole suffering servant part that like we've talked about already. Um, but also, too, they knew that the Jewish leaders were trying to kill him. Yeah. And and then 27 points to um, just some misunderstanding they had. So it was prophesied that the Christ would come from Bethlehem, right, which Jesus was born there. But he was raised where? In Galilee? Right or Nazareth? Nazareth, yeah. Nazareth. Well, it's, it's the Galilee is like the state, I believe, and then Nazareth is in Galilee. Yeah, so they didn't know where he was really from, but they also had just again a misunderstanding of some scripture from the Old Testament. So they're saying no one knows where he is, where he is from, which isn't true, right? It says that he was born in Bethlehem, um, but I guess if you want to take their statement, you know, literal, it's true. They didn't know that he was from God, right? And I think that's what Jesus points out here in these next couple of verses. So. I'll pick it up and read unless anybody else. I got a quick question. Um, just came into my mind as we we're reading this. Uh, but there's they they said here uh, that they they were waiting on Christ, right? Mm -hmm. um, how did they know that the Christ was coming? Did we discuss that before? Like how you know they had it in their head, Christ is coming, but how did they know that? I mean, did does it ever speak about that? Like they knew somebody was coming. They knew that Christ was coming. Because they had the Tanakh, they had the Old Testament, the scriptures. Okay. You know I mean? So, yeah, that's what I wanted to bring up, like, <clears throat> for our new listeners, you know. Yeah, yeah. How, j just to give them a little bit of. Yeah, the, the, these religious leaders, they had all these Pharisees and all the Sadducees and all these people, the scribes. The scribes are the ones that, that wrote everything that preserved God's word. Mm -hmm. So they had it. They, they, they knew that the Christ was going to come. From David, from the line of David, from Bethlehem, they knew that, but they they were just they didn't believe it was Jesus, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just the Old Testament, right? Which was, uh, you know, the religious text they had back then, the scrolls. Yeah. Prophesied about the Christ coming, you know, and all that. It's everything about him was prophesied. So not only him coming to die for our sin, but also when he comes back to rule all the nations, right, with righteousness, truth, and judge. Uh, righteousness, truth, and mercy. Um, but they were skipping ahead to that. You know, yeah. he's going to set us free and he's going to come and rule and reign and all this other stuff. Not yet, you know. And so they just had a misunderstanding of that. So they were expecting the Christ, but they obviously did not know it was Jesus. Yeah, there's a lot of gatekeeping happening too in those days. You know, the, the power of the information. Yeah, they were holding it for themselves. Yeah, mm. info was power. Yeah. Oh yeah, they didn't have the That's Bible good. on their phone like we have. Yeah. <laughs> the, the Pharisees were not good people. <laughs> And then, like, what I, every time I read the scriptures and I study, it's like, um, you got to know when it says, okay, you've heard. When he tells them, you've heard. So he's talking to the multitudes or the crowds because they couldn't read. And then when he's saying, oh, you've read, 
he's always talking to the Pharisees. Mm, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. So I never understood, like, if you had the winning numbers to a lottery ticket, but you had an <clears throat> infinite number of lottery ticket, like, winners, why wouldn't you just give everybody the numbers? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's right. almost like, well, if, if I don't give them these numbers, I can charge them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> For some of their own, yeah. for some of their own salvation. I mean, yeah, you could. The Pharisees loved, you know, the Get glory, keep, the power, yeah. all that yeah. stuff. Jesus calls them out on it. The yeah. Keepers. Yeah, yeah, they were. All right, so I'll pick it up in twenty-eight, right? Yeah, yeah. Then Jesus cried out as he taught in the temple, saying, "You both know know me, and you know where I am from, and I have not come of myself, but he who sent me is true, whom you do not know." So, in a sense, he's they're right. They didn't know where he was coming from because they didn't know he was coming from God. The father, he's saying, you don't know him, but I know him, for I am from him, and he sent me. Therefore they sought to take him, but no one laid a hand on him, because his hour had not come yet. So, again, they tried to take him right then and there, right, for blasphemy, because he was making himself equal to God the Father. But, you know, I don't know how God did it, but uh, he got Jesus out of that situation, because it wasn't his time to die yet. Um, and many of the people believed in him, and said, when the Christ comes, Will he do more signs than these which this man has done? So, there's a lot to take in right there on that end. They were still seeking the uh, signs or something, uh, you know what I mean, that they could see for themselves. They didn't have that true faith, you know? Right. And there's, you know, if the signs point you to Jesus, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Yeah. yeah. But if your main focus is the signs, you know, then <laughs> that's where you have a problem, right? Jesus is better than the signs. Yeah. Um, should we just keep going? 32. Yeah. Um, the Pharisees heard the crowd whispering such things about him. Then the chief priests and the Pharisees sent temple guards to arrest him. Jesus said, I am with you for only a short time, and then I will be going to the one who sent me. You will look for me, but you will find uh, you will not find me. And where I am, you cannot come. Hmm. And then, can we stop there? We could, yeah. Yeah. Um, so at this point, the Pharisees had enough, right? So they heard what the crowd's saying, and they're they're hearing that, you know, they might be coming to faith in this guy, in Jesus. And so the Pharisees sent the officers to take him. They, you know, they had enough. And uh, Jesus tells, and this is where it's kind of interesting. He's telling the people, um, I shall be with you a little while longer than I go to him who sent me. You will seek me and not find me. And where I am, you cannot come. Right? So he's talking about when he goes back up to heaven with the Father. Yeah. Right? Um, and they don't know what he's talking about. Right, exactly. But the, what I thought was interesting, right, because he's talking to all the people. He's not just talking to the disciples who know him, right? Yeah. He's talking to the crowd. And so he's saying, you will seek me and not find me, and where I am you cannot come. So this is what uh, Jimmy Swagger says. refers to the time when they would desperately need him, which would be about 37 years in the future, when Titus would destroy their city and the very temple in which they now stand, right? And so he's talking about when all these things come upon them, right, and that whole city gets destroyed, the temple gets destroyed, they're going to be crying out for God, right? And so Jesus is saying, you're going to seek me, yeah. but you're not going to find me. You know, because that was actually a judgment from God for what they did to Jesus. The know? destruction of the temple? The destruction of the temple, Amen. yeah. So, okay. And that, that, that fact is still true today, right? I mean, we're all at one time, what we mentioned earlier, right? We're all at one time going to be seeking him. Yeah. Right? All knees will bow. Every knee will bow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two by four. Yeah. Or so we're on, <laughs> we're on 35. Every time. Then the Jews said among themselves, where does he intend to go that we shall not find him? Does he intend to go to the dispersion among the Greeks and teach the Greeks? What is this thing that he has said? You will seek me and not find me. And where I am, you cannot come. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Natural, they're still tripping, yeah. Yeah, natural minded, you know, physical minded. So they're like they cannot understand what he's saying. Yeah. Which is which is true, right? Even the disciples really didn't understand what yeah. he was saying most of the time. And they didn't understand until later when the Holy Spirit came, you know, when they remembered these things, they put these things together, you know, by the power of the Holy Spirit. So it's again, it's just for, for man, natural man, it's almost impossible to really discern and understand these spiritual yeah. things. It has to be by the spirit it has of the to be by the spirit, God. you know. To raise his life with the new spirit, which bears new fruit, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and what was cool is what Rumble, uh, uh, Pastor Gordon Rumble, uh, I was with him, and uh, he, he mentioned there, there's three musts as, as believers that we must do, right? The Son of Man must be lifted up, 
we must be born again, and he must increase, and we must decrease. There's three musts, and it's all in the Gospel of John. <laughs> and I think we've covered already, too. We'll cover the, the third one later. All right. Uh, mine 35? Yeah. Then the Jew. We just read 35. Oh, okay. Uh, where are we at? 30... No, no, we didn't. Did we? 37. Yeah, 37. Okay. Oh, yeah. On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Pause? Yeah. <laughs> what do you got? So, like, to me, it said that on that great day of the feast, right? The Feast of Tabernacles, we were talking in the previous episode that it was... um when the Israelites, uh, it was like a ceremony that God had given to the nation of Israel, right? That uh, showed uh, Moses and them wandering in the wilderness, how they drank from this water. So in this study Bible, it says that that was a day that they had like a ceremony of pouring out the water and what, what God has given them for the crops and all that. So to me, in my head, I see Jesus standing out in the middle of the temple water probably everywhere and he's telling them if anyone thirsts mm -hmm. come to me right he's telling well yeah so exactly what they would do is they would go take water from the pool of silo and yeah yeah carry it back to the temple and pour it out before god as like a sacrifice mm -hmm. thanking him for all the water that they've had and all that stuff so jesus is like using that as an analogy and saying like hey that's pointing to me <laughs> you know yep. if anyone I'm thirsts the water. i'm the living water let him come to me and drink right and so he's talking about he's the well of salvation, right? And that's what that was pointing to. But of course, they didn't recognize that. And 38, again, right? Just to prove this point, there it is again. He who believes in me. Yep. Does it say he who works? Does it no, say he who yeah. keeps sacraments? Does it say he who is anything else? No. He who believes in me. All the other stuff, you know, um, the good works and all that stuff is a product of yeah. salvation, yeah. right? Yeah. Having the Holy Spirit in you not a prerequisite to salvation amen um and then it's talking about out of his heart will flow rivers of living water but this he spoke concerning the spirit whom those believing in him would receive for the holy spirit was not yet given because jesus was not yet glorified and so again that living water is god's spirit in you mm -hmm. right bubbling up to new life yep um but i just i thought this was interesting right so it's like the holy spirit is up here just like waiting to be sent but he can't be sent until Jesus he's does glorified. what he needs to do. Yeah. He's glorified, goes back up, up to the Father, and now the Holy Spirit comes down. Because, like, God is three in one, right? Like, perfect relation. Yeah. So it's like God, you know, only set the Spirit once Jesus came back. But he never leaves us alone, you know? Right. Either Jesus right. is here with us, and but when Jesus is gone, now the Holy Spirit's here with us, you know? And it's only by uh, the sacrifice of Christ. Keep going. Yeah, I thought I had something, but let's just keep moving on. If I remember, I'll go back to it. <clears throat> My apologies. Nick had something, but Anthony's phone started ringing. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's on mute. He's good. I'm staying on, to I'm staying on top of things. We're good. It's like babysitting cats. <laughs> All right. I don't even like cats. Well, I think I'm I'm allergic. <laughs> um, on hearing his words, some of, of the people said, surely this man is a prophet. Um, Others said, he is the Messiah. Still others asked, how can the Messiah come from Galilee? Does not scripture say that the Messiah will come from David's descendants, from Bethlehem, the town where David lived? Thus the people were divided because of Jesus. Some wanted to seize him, but no one laid a hand on him. Finally, the temple guards went back to the chief priests and the, Phar and the Pharisees who asked them, why didn't you bring him in? No one ever spoke this way, uh, the guards replied. And then the Pharisees said, you mean he has deceived you also? Have any of the rulers of the, or the Pharisees um, believed in him? No, but this mob that knows nothing of the law, there is a curse on them. And then he goes, you want me to stop there? Or you want you to stop, stop there? Okay. Yeah. There, there's a division we see. Right. Yeah. Because of what, that, 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 that feast was a pilgrim feast, right? Mm -hmm. so, so not everybody 
was from there or from around there. You know what I mean? So there, there was a division. Oh, this must be the Christ, or this must be the prophet. This must be. You know what I mean? And then the rulers, the Pharisees, were like, no, nah, no, nah, we know who it's supposed to be. It's supposed to come from Bethlehem. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So. so when you say the pilgrim feast, explain that. I mean, what does that mean? Well, I think the Jewish uh, feast that they had, uh, I think there was three or four pilgrimage. So so people that were Jews, either born Jewish from a, a bloodline or converted Jew- to Judaism, would go to the temple in Jerusalem for these feasts. You know what I mean? Like um, they would uh, do a drink offerings, um, sacrifices, and things like that just to... Uh, ceremonies rituals you know yeah so like he's saying all the jews would go there right for the celebration whatever it is uh those born jews or those who converted to this religion like i think uh, one of the examples we see there was an ethiopian right who came all the way yeah. and to to honor these celebrations um okay uh so 40 they're saying uh the crowd when they heard the saying said truly this is the prophet so they're referring to the old testament where god says he would raise up a prophet which did point to Jesus, right? Yep. So yeah, you had that right. But they didn't know that he was like all of it in one. He was the prophet. He's the Christ. You know, he's the anointed one. All those things. That's Jesus. He's the Messiah. He's the Messiah, right? So others said, this is the Christ. But some said, will the Christ come out of Galilee? Well, no, they had it wrong, right? He didn't come from Galilee. He came from Bethlehem. Yep. So uh, we'll see in 42, has not the scripture said that the Christ comes from the seed of David and from the town of Bethlehem where David was? Yes, they were right there. They just didn't know that Jesus was actually born in Bethlehem. Yeah, he yep. just left right away, you know, um, after being born there. So there was a division among the people because of him. Now, some of them wanted to take him, but no one laid hands on him. So some wanted to kill him, right? Yep. And no one laid hands on him. So God was obviously keeping him and protecting him. Uh, then the officers came to the chief priests and the Pharisees who said to him, why have you not brought him? Right? The officers answered, no one ever spoke like this man. <laughs> so like they went to go arrest him. Yeah. They heard his words and were obviously felt some kind of conviction from the Holy Spirit. They were cut to the heart, whatever. But they're like, there's no way we can arrest this guy after hearing the words that he was preaching, no. right? Which no, they put themselves in danger. It seems yeah. like it they seems... know that they're going to mess with God. Mm-hmm. They're not as dumb as, as the Pharisees think they are. Right. Right. Which is sad, though, because the Pharisees, you'll see, make them feel stupid. Yeah. Right? Like, these guys who oh, think they, they have all the answers are saying, oh, you really, are you deceived too? Yeah. You know? They're very manipulative. Yeah. And, and what it was, it's like, it seems like every time they hear Jesus' word, I mean, his words, it, it, it's, it's, his words is so important, man. Yeah. Like, I have to taste and see for myself, you know? Yeah. Right. The, way, the way that the Pharisees word stuff and the way that they intimidate it really like the confusion of them and the way they ask questions sounds like Satan in Genesis. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. The devil in the garden, you know, they kind of like twist yeah. like, Oh, you must be, Did God you really must be possessed say? too. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. It's just crazy to me that they, they try to hold this false position of power and mm-hmm. they're using that to, you know, try to question, make these guys question what they heard. Or so they're saying, are you also deceived? Have any of us rulers or the Pharisees believed in him? Like, if we haven't, no, right? You shouldn't either. That's yeah. what they're saying. Yeah. But this crowd does not know the law. It's accursed. Like, buddy, who are you guys? You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, it sounds like the Democratic Party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All, All right. right. Let's not go there. Sorry, Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Eddie. <laughs> oh. I mean, honestly, it just sounds like anybody who tries to hold some religious position title, you know, trying to use that against you Sam- from just believing the simple gospel. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They're the ones that are qualified to interpret text or whatever. Censorship. Yeah, well, yeah. We talked about this before with the Pharisees, you know, were wanting to hold their power still. So yeah. they're trying to make everybody, you know, deceive them so that they not, yeah. you know, lose what they had, the, the the power that they had over everybody. Yeah. And honestly, it just drives me crazy, though, you know, because there's really people who do this today. Yeah. Like yeah. they try to hold like, OK, you need to come to me. I'll go to God for you. I'll interpret this for yeah. you. And people fall into it and believe it. Yeah. Like, yeah. OK, I need to go talk to a priest. I need to go do this. You yeah. know, whatever. It could be your therapist. I don't know whoever, you know, you're putting <laughs> your faith in. I'm going to talk to a psychic. Right. You're yeah. Talk to a psychic. Whatever knew, it hey, is. I knew you were coming. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have, hey, take a seat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it just drives me crazy because it's like Jesus paid the price for you to come directly to him yeah he's and you're not going priest, to yeah. you know you want to go to some man who's holding his power over you no go to jesus he literally when he died it says that the the veil in the temple was torn yeah. signifying that we can go directly to him now right because we're righteous because of his blood but people don't take that up 
they don't take up that relationship and have that personal one-on-one -on -one with Jesus. They'd rather go put their faith in some religion, some organization, some man, right, who claims that they're holy and righteous. Yeah. You go to Jesus, bottom line. It is frustrating. He's the mediator. And you're not sure. Like from his view, you know, like, hey, I just died for you and you still want to go back to this religious ceremonial law? Like, no, come to me. I just literally laid down my life, had my hands and my feet pierced for you, and you still want to go to some priest and confess your sins? Come right. to me. Yeah. Confess yourself yeah. to me. That's the Bible says. That's it. So, all right, I'll step down from that. So, box. <laughs> it's over on 50. I'll just continue reading because we're almost done. Yeah, go and, ahead. Uh, we're at about 20 minutes. So, um, Nicodemus, who had gone to Jesus earlier in, in one of their own numbers, asked, does our law condemn a man without first hearing him to find out what he has been doing? They replied, are you from Galilee too? Look <laughs> See what I'm saying? Look into oh, it. Man. You will find that a prophet does not come out of Galilee. You know, and they're even turning on one of their own. Yeah, right. You know, or the people are. They're turning on that Pharisee. I'm not sure who's. Right. Well, it's Nicodemus, it's right? Nicodemus, so, yeah, 50. Yeah. It's Nicodemus, the one who came to Jesus yeah. by night, is kind of stepping up for Jesus a little bit. Not fully, but at least he's saying something. He says, does our law judge a man before it hears him and right. knows what he's doing? Yeah, that was in John 3. Yeah, so he's trying, you know, to say something. But again, what do they do? Now they turn on him. Yeah. And they try to make him look stupid. Oh, are you also from Galilee? Search and look. No prophet has arisen from Galilee. Like, oh, yeah. so they got a problem with Galilee. Right. <laughs> I guess so. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They got a problem with the hood, man. Mm -hmm. But yeah, little did they know that Jesus was born out of Bethlehem. Yeah. Right? Just like the scriptures say. They didn't even take the time to research it, look into themselves. Yeah. They were just like, they felt threatened by what Jesus was teaching. Yeah. And so they're like, we need to shut that down so we can keep our power. You know? I yeah, but I think Nicodemus was trying to make them change their perspective, right, by asking the question. Well, he was a believer. Yeah. I don't know if he was at this point yet. He's getting there. I think he's getting there, and this is part of it. You know, even just that fact that he was willing to go against the grain of yeah. these guys, you know, and say, hey, wait a minute. You know, at least that was something. Yeah. It wasn't perfect, but it was something. Yeah. His own people, even, you know what I mean? Yeah. He had to keep that power. He had to keep, he had to keep his belief secret so that he could help Jesus. Right. Well, yeah. yeah, and we'll see at the end, you know, it comes to a point where he's like, he doesn't even care. He goes, he asks for the body to be taken down, and he pays yeah. for the tomb, right, yeah. and yeah. all that stuff. So yeah. there is a point where I think he does make that switch and, you know, forget these guys, I'm with Jesus. Yeah, at the end here, I think that he's frustrated with other Pharisees because they're making him look like a hypocrite. Yeah. Because you know? all he's asking him is, hey, aren't these the laws? Like, why aren't you right. keeping the laws? Aren't these the rules we have set in place? Like, you hey, guys want to bend these? <laughs> you, yeah, know? all of a sudden. Because you don't like him? But, yeah, but exactly. I believe all of this had to play the way it went. Oh, 100%. For, yeah. Right? So, right. Yeah. you know, we're, we're reading all this, and we're like, well, why didn't he say this? Or why didn't they do this? Well, because they weren't supposed to at this point in time. Right? Mm -hmm. It wasn't. This is all meant for yeah. after so, the fact right. so that, you know, he could go and retrieve his body and so forth. Right? Yeah, we we got the story already. I mean, yeah. we, we know the end result. Mm -hmm. But at, that, at this time, this is happening in real life. Real life time, mean? right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, should we keep going? In eight? No. I think we should stop there and start was, in eight. Well, let's just keep going because it's so funny thing is uh, this next little scripture we're going to read that talks about the woman caught in adultery. Uh, in my study Bible, it talks about how in the earliest manuscripts, it's not inserted here. So it was inserted later. They were saying they yeah. don't know if this is the exact timeline or not, right? I have the same thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, right. Cool. So let's read it since really it's not okay. a part of the new chapter. We'll just keep going. Do you have? Right. I'll read the top part leading up into eight, the, okay. like the, the quotations okay. for why yeah. it's not in. Okay. It says, uh, the earliest manuscripts and many of ancient witnesses do not have John 53 through 811. Few manuscripts include these verses uh, wholly or in part. After John 736... John twenty one twenty five, Luke twenty one thirty eight, or Luke twenty four fifty three, and so it just kind of gives you the reference where those are. But um, the line number fifty three, we're still in chapter seven. Uh -huh. um, then they all went home, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. And that ends seven. Do you want me to go ahead into eight? Yeah, let's. I mean, let's read it. So obviously, there's a reason they put it in here, right? So yeah. I'm sure that there was some either separate piece of scripture that you know had this in there. Or it was a testimony that's been passed down, but they added it for a reason, right? And so it's in the Bible we have. We'll read it and we'll treat it as, you know, inspired, inspired word of God. Yeah. Uh, Jesus forgives an adulterous woman. At dawn, he appeared again in the temple courts where all the people gathered around him. He sat down uh, to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. 
they made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. And the law of Moses, if in the law of Moses, commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? As they were speaking to Jesus. And they were using questions as a trap in order to have basis of accusing him. Mm -hmm. Want to speak on that or keep going? Uh, we could talk about it. So, I mean, it's just there. Like, they're still trying to trick him. Yeah, yeah. right. So, you can't trap Jesus. What's at the heart of this, right? They're not ringing her saying, hey, what should we do? Yeah. They're trying to see what he's going to do, right? So they yeah. can accuse him, right? Yeah. So that was the whole purpose. But it's, it's the whole thing's kind of weird, right? So first of all, uh, so they they caught this woman and they set her in the mist. So the Greek says that they brought her by force, right? Dragged her by force out and set her in the midst of the people, right? Yeah. And then uh, Jimmy Swagger points out, well, where's the guy at? You know? Yeah. yeah. Where's, the, where's, the, where's the dude? Everybody, yeah. Uh... Well, they, 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 you see, they don't Takes judge two. with equal weights and balances. Exactly. And that's, yeah. what, that's the problem, even in... Oh, never, never mind. And who knows? It could, honestly, it could have been one of their own people. Yeah. Maybe that's why they didn't bring him out. They, you know, they just wanted to bring the girl. Oh, wow. mm. <laughs> how'd they but, catch him? But, I want to know how they caught him. That's yeah. another thing, too, right? Because, yeah. because if you're going to get killed, mm -hmm. you're going to really make sure it's secret. Maybe the dude's just a snitch. Yeah. Or he's a Pharisee and it was a trap. Right, yeah. I mean, so either way, the whole thing is super questionable. Yeah. And I think, you know, the fact that the Bible kind of reveals their heart behind it and the fact that they were testing Jesus, it just shows a lot as well, right? Um, so the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman to him, caught in adultery. When we said Sarah before in his midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Okay, so they obviously seen it go down, right? So yeah. questionable to begin with. Right. <laughs> now, Bunch of birds watching right. it. <laughs> so now Moses and the law commanded that she should be stoned. But what do you say? And so the law did say that, right? It yeah. says that the both the man and the woman should be stoned for their adultery. Right, but let's let's take that back. So the Old Testament, do you want to explain about that? That it would. Go ahead. So the Old Testament is showing God's holiness, right? Right. God, He's perfect, and if He gave us all we deserve, we should be put to death, right? We're all sinners. Yeah. But He's also love, right? So He sent His own Son to, you know, pay for that that wrath. Jesus took all the wrath for us, and so in reality, they're correct, right? She should be stoned. Yeah. So should the man, according to the law. And so we're asking Jesus, what would you say? Try and trap him. Right, trying to trap him. We'll keep reading. You want to pick it up in 6? Yep. <clears throat> this they said, testing him, that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Then those who heard it being convicted by their conscience went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, No, no one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. That's good. Jesus knows we're going to sin. Wow. Right. That is, yeah. so I mean, like, hey, I know you're going to do that, so I'm not going to, I can't condemn you. Because we always miss the mark. But he's going to love you. What do you guys think he was writing? I mean, it doesn't <laughs> say, I don't know, but what, where do else do we see where someone was writing? Well, he was about to drop a mixtape, so I think it was the date. <laughs> <laughs> was he gonna be fired? Yeah, maybe. If you really think about it, in the Old Testament, we see Moses got the Ten Commandments written by the finger of God. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is in the sand, writing it with his finger, and he's God. Mm -hmm. But the Pharisees didn't know that. You know what I mean, but but in my mind, it reminds me of the angel of the Lord. Was it Jesus giving the Ten Commandments to Moses? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think he was writing, not one. No, I'm not. <laughs> not one. <laughs> not one. It's going to throw the stone. Not at one. Him. Oh. <laughs> and he changed their perspective, that's for sure. So, yeah, I've heard that too, Brother Anthony, that uh, he, so it says the finger of God wrote the Ten Commandments, right? Yeah. And so some people believe that Jesus is writing the Ten Commandments yeah. on the ground, right? Yeah. But the bottom line is, if the Holy Spirit wanted us to know, it would yeah. be in here. You know, yeah. 
So we really it's just don't speculation, know. Yeah. Just speculation, but I think that's a good speculation, right? Because we'll see it. Let me just recap here. So they said this testing and that they might have something which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. Right? He's kind of ignoring them. Yeah. So when they continued asking him, he raised up himself and said to, to them, He who was without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And then he stooped down on the, on the, uh, and wrote on the ground. Then those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last. So in my mind, uh, that makes sense that he's writing the Ten Commandments because look, it goes from uh, where is it, the oldest, right, to the youngest. Yeah. So <laughs> the oldest people, of course, they're going to have more sins, right? And so they're going to have they're going to be the first ones to leave because they know they've done the, they broke the first commandment, they broke the second commandment, yeah. they broke the third commandment, and so of course they're going to leave, right? Because they got the most sin all the way down to the youngest person, right? And so none of them, they knew they weren't qualified, you know, to throw the stone because they had sin in their life, right? And then it says that Jesus was left alone with the woman standing in the mist. And when Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? And she said, no one, Lord. So she calls him Lord. And so in the commentary I have here, it says that that was her making him her savior, right? And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. And so the, the question that Jimmy Swagger points out, it's a good question. How... How was he keeping the law and was able to let her go? Because the law said she should be stoned, but he let her go. How is that possible? Grace. That's what I, I mean. In my mind, that's what I see. That's like the ultimate grace you can give someone mm -hmm. right there. Right. And that that's in my mind. But because Jesus is not going to be, a, you can't, he's not a liar. Uh -huh. He's not, he doesn't contradict himself. He's, I mean, like, so there, like, there has to be like, to me, in my mind, it's grace, but I mean, I really don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But your question again was what? How did he? Uh, How did he? Because the law says that she should have been stoned. The law says. And Jesus never broke the law. <clears throat> he fulfilled the law. So how well, was it? How was both possible? Well, because he did it. Uh, he told them, right? Those who throw the first stone. Right. But think about it, though. The Bible says Jesus never sinned. Yeah. He kept the law perfectly. The law requires that she be stoned, but he let her go. So how did he but, not break the law? But to me, he let didn't her let her go. He allowed them to go ahead and throw the stone. If you believe that, go ahead and throw that they're, first they're, stone. They were fear. Of and they, hand. the ones that didn't follow with the law. Oh, yeah. Right? And that, that right? Not, Je not Jesus, but they. But he's a man, too, right, who was under law at this point, right? Yeah, he that's law. true, he too. Yeah. It. So, but, but, but I think that's why when he put his head up and he asked her, where are your accusers? And he said, she said, none, they're, none of them either. They're all gone. Well, then I forgive you then, you know? Yeah. Well, I'm going to read it because I'm not going to act like I came up with this on my own. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what Jimmy Swagger says. Uh, Jesus kept the law perfectly by dying in her place. Ooh. Exactly as he did with all of us. That's how he could let her go free as well as you and me. And kept the law. Yeah. Because he took her place. That's just how like Barabbas. Yeah, ex he took, exactly. Right, just like us. Yeah. That's the same like way us. he lets us go free because he took our punishment. It's grace. It's grace. Now, right? and that's how. favor, man. You go, daughter. I'll take care of it. But he did that for Eve, too. For everybody. For everybody. Yeah, but in this specific example, it's just so cool because you see it actually played out in flesh, in real life. Yeah. They should have stoned her. He says, no, you go. Why? Because he's going to take that beating for her. He's going to take that death. Oh, yeah. So. Wow. You sure you didn't come up with that? No. Ah. Yeah, come on, trust me, ain't that smart. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, we're not smart, man. All we do is adapt. We learn and adapt. You know what I mean? And we apply. Okay. All right. So I guess we'll keep going here. No, no, we're, that's it. Oh. Yeah, we're at 34. Just kidding. No, sorry. I, I, I meant to do that. Okay. Well, All that right. concludes this episode. That yeah. That was a good stop right there. Yeah. Jacob was right for once. <laughs>